Hey guys, section 14.2, limits and continuity in higher dimensions. So in the previous section, uh, we introduced the functions of several variables. So now we want to discuss what, uh, how to calculate the limits of such functions and uh, what does it mean for a function of several values to be continuous. So we will first in somewhat uh, define the limits of functions for two variables and then we will discuss the properties of limits of functions and finally we end with definition of continuity. Okay, how do we define the limits for function of two variables? Well, I'm not going to give you the rigorous definition, so I will be awake. So let's, let's do it. Assume that we are given the function of two variables, and we say, we say, the limit as x comma y goes to x zero y zero of f of x comma y is equal to L if, right? So my domain consists of x and y uh, coordinates, right? So I need to let x, y go to another coordinate x0, y0. Okay, why? Uh, and uh, when can I say that this limit is equal to L? Well, if we can, we can make f of x as close to L as we want, so very close to L. How? Well, by making my xy coordinate very close to x0, y0. Well, what does it mean for making x, y coordinate to be very close to x0, y0? Well, it simply means the distance, right? So if here, this is your x, y, here your x0, y0. So basically this distance, I should make very close, okay? Uh, so, so closeness, well, you know the Euclidean distance, so. In other words, x minus x0 square plus y minus y0 square. So I want this to be small, right? By making this quantity small, I can make f of x, y very close to, to L. Okay, so this is again a vague definition, but uh, I think we can uh, take this uh, as our definition. So once you define your limit of function of two variables, the properties follows as as in the one-dimensional case, right? As as in the functions of single variable. So let's say that my function f goes to L, and my function g goes to m, when x y goes to x zero y zero, right? Then the sum of the limits is limit of the sums. Uh, difference of the limits is uh, limit. Sorry, limit of the difference is the difference of the limits. Uh, multiplication by k simply makes the limit multiplied by k. The product rule applies. So, so the limit of f times g is simply l times m. The the quotient rule also apply, applies. The the limit of the quotient is simply the quotient of the limits as far as m is not zero. And the power rule also goes through. So the limit of f to the power n is simply l to the power n. The square root or nth root also, also fine, okay? So we can apply the, all these properties. So here in, in here, we can, for example, uh, this is the limit of the quotient. Well, we can say, well, this is nothing but the, the limit of uh, numerator divided by the limit of the denominator. Where uh, the limit is take, uh, taken, taken x, y to 0, 1. 
uh, and then you can also split the limits right so limit of x minus xy plus 3 is just limit of x minus limit of x times a limit of y plus 3 and so on and so forth so basically uh, it's nothing but uh, the assignment right so you let x go to 0 y go to uh, 1 then it goes to 1 minus uh, sorry x goes to 0 so 0 minus 0 times 1 plus the 3 here at the bottom x square y goes to 0 square times 1 plus 5 times 0 times 1 minus 1 cube so it gives us minus 3 and the 4b you can again the limit of the square root of x squared plus y squared is just a square root of the limit right x squared plus y squared where x y goes to 3 and minus 4 so then uh, if x goes to 3 then x squared goes to 3 squared if y square goes sorry if y goes to minus 4 the y square goes to minus 4 squared so you get a square root of 25 i.e you get 5. example 2 we would like to find the limit of x square minus xy divided by square root of x minus square root of y when xy goes to 0 0. now we cannot simply sort of apply the quotient rule because if you take the uh, limit of uh, square root of x minus square root of y, the denominator becomes zero. But if you remember, uh, the denominator should not be zero so that we can apply the rule. What we can do? Well, we can do the uh, rationalizing the denominator trick. So you simply multiply both the numerator and the denominator by square root of x plus square root of y then you will get here x square minus xy square root of x plus square root of y and at the bottom you get x minus y right right x y goes to zero zero well so what i still have a x minus y go to zero well luckily x square minus xy can be written right here i can write it as x times x minus y then x minus y is cancelled right now if i take x go to zero y go to zero what i see that uh, i get zero square root of zero square root of y sorry square root of zero so i got zero in general, finding the limit of functions of several variables, it's much challenging than doing the same thing for the functions of single variable. Why is that the case? Well, because in the functions of one variable, let's say that if your x goes to zero, you have two choices, right? The right hand limit and left hand. So x can approach to zero from left or from right that's it right you can sort of look at however now in in two-dimensional case for example here's my zero zero and how am i going to approach to zero zero right how my x y approaches well it might approach from left right it might approach from right from top from bottom from some other sides right it can approach uh, like circular right or spiral and so forth so you see there are lots of lots of different ways of approaching to one single point on on a plane so that's kind of uh, makes this uh, problem difficult because you need to show that uh, if you want to say that this limit exists then you need to show that no matter in which direction you approach to zero zero it always exists so showing that limit exists is in fact challenging right so what we do in here well we can do the sandwich theorem for example a sandwich theorem still applies here uh, so how do we sandwich well let's look at this 4 x y square divided by x square plus y square well we know that uh, y square is less than uh, x square plus y square right so which means y square is 
divided by x squared y squared is less than or equal to 1. So this means this quantity is less than or equal to 4 times x. I, I, I took the absolute value, so I know that this is uh, non-negative. So I see that this function that uh, whose limit I'm trying to find, uh, when you take the absolute value, it becomes uh, restricted between, sort of sandwiched between 0 and 4 uh, absolute value of x. So now, if I go ahead and let x and y go to 0, right? Now if I let x and y go to 0, well, the left uh, part goes to 0 because it's 0, right? How about for 4 times x? Well, regardless of how you approach to 0, right? Because you're approaching to 0, 0. Anyway, so x is approaching to 0, so it means 4x also goes to 0. So by sandwich, we see that the limit of this uh, absolute value of this uh, function is 0. But if the absolute value of the function is 0, then uh, the function itself needs to approach to 0. So in, in, in a sense, uh, we were sort of lucky to end up applying the sandwich theorem uh, and uh, obtain the zero as a limit. All right, so let's say that uh, I have a function f of xy given by y over x. And I would like to find out if the limit exists when xy goes to zero, zero. Okay, this is interesting. You can try to use the sandwich theorem that uh, as we did in the previous slide, but you will realize that it's not going to work. Then you suspect that maybe the limit doesn't exist. Well, as I said, I mean, uh, I'm limit exists means I have complete freedom from which side I want to approach. So for example, on my x, y. So for example, I can approach from this line, right? So what is this line? This is like y is equal to x line. So I can let y and, and x equal, and then I can approach, let both of them approach to zero, right? So then what happens? Well, f of x, x, this will give me x over x, this is one. So then if you take the limit, x go to zero here, right, for this function, well, it is simply one, right? Okay, well, so we can say, oh, then maybe limit is one. However, as I said, uh, to, regardless of which side you approach, you need to get the, the, the same same limit. However, let's try the following. For example, I can simply say uh, I want to approach from this uh, horizontal direction, right? But in the, in here, uh, my y is zero, right? So uh, here the, it's x and the comma zero. Well. Then what happens if you let uh, x, y go to 0, 0, but y is already 0, then this is going to be 0 over x. So this is simply 0, right? That's it. So the just the limit is 0. But 1 is not equal to 0. So you see, we end up having different limits for different uh, when, when you approach different uh, sides. So it means the limit doesn't exist. So limit does not exist exist. How about continuity in several dimensions? Well, it's analogous to the single uh, variable case. So we say that the function f x y is continued at a point x0 y0. If the function must be defined, then the limit must exist and the limit must be equal to the value of the function. So then we call the function as continuous. And if the function can use everywhere in its domain, we, we simply call it the function is continuous, right? Again, showing continuity is difficult because uh, it involves finding the limit, right? And finding the limit in, uh, or showing the existence of the limit in two dimensions or several dimensions is difficult. However, um, showing that something is not continuous might be easier. So in particular, you can simply show that limit fails to exist, then it means you show that the function is not continuous. So here is one uh, method 
So this is called two pass test for non existent limit. So if a function has different limits along two different paths, like we did in, in the previous example, then uh, we say that the, the limit doesn't exist. So let me do one example. Let's show that this function 2x square y divided by x to the 4 plus y square has no limit as x, y approach to 0, 0. Okay, well, here is one, uh, one way. So I can approach uh, to 0, 0. How? Well, I can, for example, let my uh, y equal to 0, right? So I can make... I can vary x but let y zero. Then uh, it, it's like letting x only go to zero, right? But then what happens to the to the limit of this function? So you let y is zero. So this is translated as letting simply x equal to x go to zero, right? You're, you're not letting x equal to zero because then it becomes zero over zero, so it becomes undefined. So then it's two x square, so this limit. The limit it becomes 2 x squared times 0 divided by x to the 4 plus 0 well numerator is already 0 right so this is 0 over x to the 4 so this is 0 and this is 0 now let's try to approach to 0 from different different uh, direction so for example I can approach from uh, x and x square and again i'm just letting x go to zero so this x x square is a curve right this is like a parabola uh, so in, in place of y i'm taking x square and then letting this x and x square go to zero which is the same as letting x go to zero so in this case so x x square goes to zero zero what happens well i have 2x square and in place of y I can replace by x square here I have x to the 4 plus x to the 4 so I get 2x to the 4 divided by 2x to the 4 so I get a limit of 1 now regardless of where you let x go this is just constant this is 1 again what we see that 0 is not equal to 1 right so this is by 2 pass test right we say that the limit doesn't exist the final note is about compositions. If you have two continuous functions, then their composition becomes continuous, like in the uh, one-dimensional case. So some examples, x minus y, this is a continuous function, e to the whatever, so e to the, let's say, x is a continuous function, hence e to the x minus y is Continuous similarly the cosine is a continuous function this x y Divided by x square plus 1 is continuous hence their composition is continuous 1 plus x square y square is continuous hence and ln is also continuous uh, whenever uh, sorry, X is positive right so whenever ln x is continuous if x is positive so hence 1 plus x square y square is so ln of 1 plus x squared y squared is continuous. I'll stop here.